That is awesome, man. The Star Wars geek inside you must have went crazy, Teo. It was really, I got to tell you, when that came on, when we were over Ooh. at Harmon uh, Luxury Audio Headquarters in Northridge, California, and this was part of just really a small part of the uh, experience that we got, it was uh, really a blast. And I think that kind of encapsulates what an incredible time we had out there. And uh, the folks over at Harmon and NJBL just really did a fantastic job. So excited to talk about it. Awesome. Yeah. You know, I always love um, just learning the stuff that goes on over at Harmon, talking to the different engineers and scientists. They, it's amazing the accomplishments that that brand has made and how they still focus on bettering the products through research. And of course, Audioholics is in very, very much in sync with that. You know, we like to know the science behind how things work and we try to avoid the snake oils. So that's why I thought it was imperative that you went to this press event and I wanted you to cover it because you of all people are a tech person. Yeah. And uh, and I asked you to put together a little side presentation. I didn't know we were going to get a, thes a thesaurus. I've got like 91 slides here. Uh, Teo doesn't do anything half-assed here on Audioholics, and that's why we love him. And he smiles while he's doing the whole thing. He's murdering us while he's doing it, but that's okay. It's all good. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, really, Gene, I, I want to thank you for the experience. And again, just extend a big thank you to the entire team over at Harmon. It was uh, such an incredible day and, and really an opportunity. I think any of us who are uh, audiophiles or home theater fanatics one of the bucket list things that just has to be for us is just to make a pilgrimage over to Harmon's uh, headquarters over there. And it was nothing short of spectacular. So what my goal is tonight, just to sort of set expectations, is really tell you a little bit and a little bit about the experience of um, what the day was like. And we went through a lot of different phases. So I wanted to convey that because when we start talking about um, Harman in particular, we're talking about a parent company that has a whole lot of different brands. So the focus of the visit was primarily JBL. But when we talk about Harman Luxury, most of us know, but in case you don't, it really encompasses what really are some of the premier brands uh, in audio. So Arkham, uh, JBL Synthesis, Mark Levinson, Lexicon and Revel. And Gene, you know, I am a Ultima 2 salon owner, and it is just uh, where science and sound come together. Uh, just uh, my favorite pair of speakers, period, stop. So mm -hmm. I've been a big fan of, of Harman, uh, what they've been able to do, and, and the science of sound and the sound of science uh, has just been fantastic. So one of the things that was really great about our visit out there to Harmon headquarters and an opportunity to convey that to everybody who's watching is the fact that Harmon really encompasses all these other brands as well that you may or may not know. So AKG, you know, all those great headphones by AKG or mm -hmm. Harmon brand, Harmon Card and Infinity Crown, DBX, Martin, uh, Soundcraft and Austere. So all these really make up the Harmon family. And one of the themes that they tried to convey to us at the event was that when you're talking about Harmon, you're talking about a world-class engineering team and resources that packs all this uh, together. And you're really looking at, as you said, a science-based approach uh, to design. And when the Harmon team, particularly JBL, makes all their technologies, they're proprietary and patented. And everything is designed and built and they use Harman X as their science standard. So those of us who follow the channel, you know, it's going to be your Floyd Tool, your, um, you know, Sean Olive, your Todd Welty. So it's really a science-based approach 
to how sound is done. So JBL speakers are really made for every application. And when they sat us down at the beginning, they wanted us to understand a few things as to really how the changes are happening in the audio industry. And I thought this was quite uh, interesting. So if we think about how we've looked at our audio products over the years, we're pretty well set on what that industrial design is like and, and what that interface is. And Harmon made it a point to introduce us to human. And human, which was new to me, um, is actually an internal uh, design agency that Harmon has. And what they do is they focus in on brand design UI and bringing this this facet to luxury audio is really something that's that's new. And over the past decade, uh, Human has won 464 design awards. And the luxury audio component of Harman has actually won 25 luxury audio design awards, including the uh, 5105 uh, Mark Levinson turntable, the ST60 streamer, Stage 2, and the JBL Classics. And they gave us a couple of examples of how they're using human now to really help shape future product design. And they're doing it again, this is a Harman approach, it's a data-based approach. So they took us through, and this was us, it was a very intimate group that was there uh, in the Harman Experience Center. And we sat around the table and they took us through doing a study of the current consumer. So Gen Z, which is the Zoomer generation, and they gave us a comparison of Zoomers versus Millennials. And if we're looking at Zoomers, we're saying, okay, they're telling us that 89% are living in emerging markets. That's 32% of the global population. They spend 34 trillion or 8% of the global spend and about a 40% shopping share uh, here in the USA. So it's a fairly sizable consumer market. And then they took us through uh, a use case and a walkthrough is what's the difference between the millennial generation and Zoomers and what implications that ha does that have on product design? And when we say the product design, these are the products that we're going to be using as consumers. So millennials have had a tendency to want products that elevate the experience, whereas a Zoomer is going to want a device that just works and blends into the background. They don't want to have to deal with it. And a millennial is going to be concerned with what the brand offers. So it's going to be all those great badges and logos and more features, whereas a Zoomer is going to be interested more in what's the story or the movement behind the product. And that's going to be a differentiator for a Zoomer making a decision on what product they're going to buy. A millennial wants a product that is made for me, whereas a Zoomer is going to say, well, no, I want a product that's made by me. I want to have input. I want to use my social media channels to feel as though I've contributed to either the design or the feature set or something else. And I want to say in the product creation so that my personality is infused in the product. So JBL with Human is now taking all of these data sets and it's starting to influence how future products are being designed out. So for example, some of the things that we will start seeing in audio design, and indeed, we've, if you really think through it, we've started to see it already, is that luxury brands are going to start to be real and raw and colorful and bold. So if you look at the JBL Classic line that came out, well, what did you have? You had these bright orange grills that were there. That's directly influenced by some of this, both the retro, but also influenced by um, some of the data and research. So you're not gonna necessarily get the clean and polished look that maybe has been um, the typical uh, domain of high-end audio. And interior spaces are gonna play more and more of a role. So as tech and life integrate, it's not gonna be so much, hey, we're the home theater crowd and we're gonna have a dedicated space of our theater to put up all our speakers in and that's gonna be a dedicated room. No, it's really gonna be industrial design needs to be integrated into home decor. So I don't know, speakers and lamps, anyone? And tech that really blends into the environment. Um, so products that allow you to interact while keeping you comfortable. Things are just easy to use and they just work. So it's like having an Alexa to say, hey, Alexa, why don't you turn on the TV? 
And I probably just did that for about 50% of the audience listening, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, the JBL brand is now going to fully come under luxury audio. I mean, if my notes are correct, and I think I was correct when I took this down, typically those of you will know that it was really just JBL synthesis. It was the higher end brand that was under luxury audio. And now JBL, the entire brand is going to come under the luxury audio segment. So yeah, they'll really have an opportunity to shape all uh, aspects of the mass market. So it'll be the two channel, uh, custom installer market, immersive home theater, et cetera, et cetera. So when we started off the day and we had this presentation, we were brought into what's called the Harmon Experience Center. And it's where the products come to life. And it's kind of cool. And if I'm not mistaken, I think folks can actually visit this. It's, it's some place that's semi open to the public. So watch all the Harmon folks start emailing me after this presentation saying, no, that's not right. As, as people are lining up. And uh, Dave Globke, who's the director of corporate communications, um, was one of the key people along with Jim Garrett that walked us through the day. So here it is, we were at the entrance and we were walking through and you go through this hallway and they have the Grammy Awards. So there's one for AKG, JBL, and it's there. And down at the back, you'll see this massive LED wall and all the lights that you see in the hallway are all synchronized to video, lighting, and music through Harman's uh, uh, Martin uh, control system. So you really have this integrated approach. And the point that they're trying to tell you right from the get go is, hey, if you're a consumer and you want an integrated approach to home theater or lighting or smart home, you can do it all with a Harman solution. So this is sort of their their showcase to do that. So as soon as we come around the corner, you have this just gorgeous rack. Again, as the tech guy, I'm salivating over all the equipment that's here between the amplifiers, the control stations, and really the showcase of everything. Um, we were brought around. And then when you go into the uh, section, you have these little areas where you can focus in a bit on some Harman specific technologies. So in this booth area, they had all of the uh, JBL and AKG technology solutions geared towards mixing and listening. So it was really great that these areas were sort of specific and, and product focused. So we had the uh, JBL Pro speakers here. You had, if you look on um, the left side, there were some of the, uh, the microphones and some of the AKG headphones on the right side. And then the lighting solutions that you can use as part of the um, integration, decor, what have you. So really an integrated experience. Then that opening montage that uh, you saw that was done to John Williams, uh, uh, the Imperial March, we were brought into this massive space. And this is where we really got to see the pro line of JBL with the line array speakers put into action. The experience here was so intense, it was like being in a concert venue. So you felt the music physically, it moved your clothing. It was unbelievable the way they had all the subs lined around and everything was just perfectly synchronized um, to the lighting. So once we had a little bit of that flair, we got a deep dive into engineering. Now, Harman's still working in a COVID, post-COVID environment. And it was interesting, even though things were being rearranged, how engineering and science is such an integral part of everything that they do. So, for example, what we did is we got a deep dive directly with Harman speaker designers, engineers, their manufacturing. Everything was accessible to us. And they walked us through how things go from concept to prototyping to testing. So what you'll see here is they were walking us through the compression drivers and how they were doing uh, designing the waveguide. So everything is computer modeled. And then what will happen is once the modeling and the analysis is done on computers, they will use 3D printers to then make real time prototypes of things that they've designed and be able to then test that out. So what you'll see in a few slides later is everything is arranged in a very, very uh, close proximity. So the engineering team is right next to the team that does the manufacturing, right next to the team that does the part design and support. So it's all there probably 
in, I don't know, maybe like a, a thousand square foot uh, area and all the desks are easily accessible. So the designers can go over to, um, you know, manufacturing and production and, and they all uh, coordinate here. So everything is just modeled. So these are the different stations. And then what you see here is the product as it's being um, assembled on a part by part basis. And what JBL made it a point to say is they're now complying with the European standards that is allowing you to actually dissemble the speaker. And if something breaks to actually replace it. So think about that. We're going to have consumer replaceable and consumer fixable speakers in this arena. Now, when we talked about the um, really the shift that's happened with 3D printing, I, I asked the question, I said, OK, why don't you tell me uh, what has been one of the biggest technological advances? Is it been just a computer design, you know, 3D printing? Blah, blah, and they said it's 3D printing. What used to take us months or a year, we can now do in one week or a couple of weeks. So they can actually go from design to prototype to concept, almost to production in a couple of weeks. So it's really been an incredible game changer. So here again, a little bit of that. So Gene, I know you're a measurement guy. Mm -hmm. So yes, I got a chance to go and we did it. We, we had a chance to go into the anechoic chambers and see how it's all done. So once something is prototyped, let's say, all of these cutouts are made to different sizes of products, if you will. So they can go in, they can 3D print a product, and they can pop it into one of these templates and then bring it into the anechoic chamber and in 20 minutes do a measurement. Then they can go back if they see that there's been any anomalies, then go back, they can print a new um, template, pop it in, and then measure it again. And these facilities, again, are in walking proximity. So here, we're in one of the anechoic chambers. So there are, I think, it, is it 10 anechoic chambers that they have, or, or seven? I think there's seven anechoic chambers on the Harmon campus. And if memory serves correct, I believe it's three of them are used by um, the luxury audio division. So it's really incredible. Yeah, so there's seven chambers, luxury audio uses uh, three of the seven, and each chamber is a different size and application. So there's a two pi for smaller, four pi for larger, and then they have even a larger chamber um, that the pro uh, folks have that's for arena and ground plane measurements. So as you can see, they have a template. It's just an MDF board. They pop the speaker in, and then they have the, um, the microphones all set at different angles, and they can get all the measurements to see how all that is prototyped out. So that's one. Then what you see here is in the middle of this anechoic chamber is the spinorama. So this will, they'll put a smaller speaker in this case and this one, if, if I'm not mistaken. And then they will actually have that stand rotate at different angles. And then the computer system will capture what the measurement is with the microphone on the other side um, at different angles. So that way they can get all of those measurements in and then finally, you can see here a smaller speaker that's in one of the uh, spinoramas there. So again, it, it's where we really see science and sound uh, coming together. And Gene, as you know, Harman is one of the few audio companies in the world that has its own anechoic chamber facilities. Oh, yeah. and they have multiples. Yeah. Yeah. So this is really an incredible advantage that they have. Um, versus the competition and being able to prototype everything. And I, I just want to emphasize again, I didn't really get it until I was there on campus. Mm -hmm. You're sitting at a desk and it's the speaker design. And then literally right across the hall, there's one of the listening rooms. So you can actually pop the speakers in right there. And then you take a right, you go down the hall, and then there you have a couple of anechoic chambers so that you can actually test and prototype everything. So it just, everything is integrated and makes it super easy to go from concept design uh, production. Did you go sit inside the anechoic chamber and shut the door and see how quiet it was? They did. We, we got a little yeah. bit of that. Uh, and people experience different things. So uh, it wasn't that bad for me. 
Um, and they didn't do it for very long. So we weren't sitting in there for five mm -hmm. minutes. Yeah, you know, some people will hear their heartbeat. Some people will actually get, um, you know, claustrophobic and yeah. different things, but we all, we all made well, it. When I was, when I was younger and I worked at Raytheon, we had an RF anechoic chamber, which is very similar to this. The wedges were really long and I had to do a lot of work in there and I have to shut the door and be in there for sometimes hours. And I could hear my blood moving through my veins. I had to bring headphones in and stick them in my ears because I couldn't handle it. I was going insane. So yeah, it's okay if you're in for a minute or two, but you don't want to be in there for very long. No, not at all. It is very is a very weird experience. And if you all have acoustic panels at home, the best thing to do is actually go right next to the acoustic panel and speak. And that gives you just probably about 3% of what it's like to be completely encased in, in an AI in a coke chamber. It's, it's intense. Yeah. So part of the next day, which I think this will resonate as well, was we had a series of educational presentations. So Sean Olive kicked it off unsurprisingly. So it was great to have Sean do that. And Sean went over what really has been the hallmark of um, maybe the past almost uh, 10, 12 years worth of research that he's been spearheading in terms of headphone research and the so-called Harmon curve for headphones. So he went over um, that. We actually, in his presentation, he covered something that I hadn't seen before, uh, which had to do with room correction um, preferences and a couple of other presentations. So it was an opportunity for us to engage with Sean directly, see what some of the research is, and again, how the research and the science and, and sound and design all blend together. Um, one of the things I did raise, I don't know if those of you are aware, Harmon uses trained listeners. And Harmon has available as a free download. I haven't looked at it um, recently. Yeah, it's been a while uh, since I've seen it too. But it used to be for both Mac and Windows. Uh, it, I think it's Learn to Listen. So I think that's what the application is called. And what it does, it helps you become a better listener to discern things. So when Apple upgraded to the Mac OS, uh, and they went to OS 10. Harman didn't really support a whole lot of versions into that. So it's been discontinued to the Mac. So for those of you in the Mac community, I advocated, hey, can we get a Mac version going again? But um, it's an application that if you really want to uh, make an investment into becoming a better listener, I highly recommend the application. And you can find it online um, and download it. It's, it's free to do so. Yep. And then what we did is, Harmon then went through a couple of other educational presentations and they really went into compression driver technology. And this is obviously one of the main things that JBL is known for. And when they did so, they did it in a couple of different facets. Um, they told us a couple of just functional things with regards to compression drivers or horns. And it was really going about the efficiency where you can get 20 to 50% efficiency with a compression driver, whereas with the typical dome tweeter that most of us are accustomed to, you're getting two to 5%. So just the performance advantages alone of a compression driver, especially when it comes to home theater, when it comes to filling up space, um, were really evident in the presentation uh, and, and the educational um, uh, array that they did. So they also went through what some of the challenges were and why from their perspective, the JBL Harmon approach to creating the waveguide and, and their proprietary waveguides are, are superior in their opinion to matching the dispersion of the other drivers in the, the speaker array. So all that was really great. And it was an opportunity for them to open up the, um, what they call the, the Harmon uh, online education uh, learning management system which I was not previously aware of. So Harmon University, as it's called, it was launched during over the pandemic and they have over 5,000 users. It's a mobile ready site and they have uh, training and learning resources for basically every single product line. And it covers some of the technology. So if you're looking at JBL, it'll go up to the introduction of compression drivers, direct radiators, et cetera, et cetera, all the way to, hey, I'm, I've got a JBL synthesis and I wanna learn how to do Dirac Live calibration and home theater design, et cetera, et cetera. It's a, it's a really comprehensive environment and it's free 
JBL offers this for free. So you can create an account for free, go online. And I have to tell you, the, the classes are great. You can um, get quote unquote virtual certificates and then you can track your progress. And then you get a dashboard that says, hey, this is how many courses you have completed. This is how many courses you have in progress. Here's been your total time in the system over the past week, the past month, and how many certificates you've earned. So it's really an incredible platform. Uh, and Gene, what we'll do is, why don't we put the URL for um, Harmon University in the notes? And that way- Yeah, we'll put it in the video description after this live stream. Sign up, it'll be great. This was one of my favorite parts of the day. And Gene, you would have loved this. It was called oh. Hulk testing. And this is where Harmon products get their, um, I don't know what the right word is, their brutal, not real world testing to try to break it. So we were brought into this, down this hallway, all concrete. It was like a bunker. And then we go into this room. And the first thing that you do is you have the smell. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's that burnt circuit board, <laughs> smell, yeah. right? Like you fried yeah. electronics and it's pervasive. So when we walk into this concrete area, you hear a vibration moving along. So there's an active test that's going on in the next room. So what they do is they bring us up towards the front and then we are greeted with a few things that I go over in a sec. So the bottom line that JBL really impressed upon us, and I got to see it firsthand, which was cool, is the rigorous testing that all the products go through. I mean, the smell was a case in point. And speakers go through a four-day, 100-hour trial to try to break them. And what they do with the testing is they put them through applications that don't really exist in the world, real world to try to get the product to fail and then analyze what the failure was and then try to go back and fix it. And unlike some other manufacturers, they don't take prototypes. They take actual production off the assembly line. So this is the same stuff that's being shipped to consumer. And that way they're testing the actual product that has been um, designed when they do it. So we could hear the stuff through the concrete walls. And then here's what we were faced with as they were doing the introduction is we have this JBL professional sign. And then you got to say, all right, wait a minute. They're giving us these massive headsets, the kind you only see outside of airplanes. And then it paid closer attention to say, caution. Uh-oh, it says sound levels in power test will damage hearing. And yes, all employees entering will not be exposed to more than five minutes per day. So Gene, wow. what were they doing? Right, even with, I mean, think about that. Even with the headset, you can't be in that room for more than five minutes per day, just to give you an idea of the intensity that's going on. Yeah. So this was not a staged, this particular aspect here was not uh, pre-programmed or staged. So there was active testing that was going on by JBL professional that was not um, part and that's good that they they take the employees into consideration for their health. I don't know if they work with OSHA or what, but you definitely a lot of workplaces in factories, they sometimes ignore the how loud the sound can be and how damaging it can be with a lot of exposure. So that's a good thing to see here. The sound was so intense. They were testing three JBL subwoofers. The sound was so intense when we went into that room that I had to take my hands over the um, the headphones that we were wearing, and I had to press it in to further dampen the sound. That's how loud it was. A couple of folks took out their phones to do an SPL meter. Nobody could get a reading. No, it was too loud. It, yeah. it broke every single app on every phone that folks had. So the it was probably in excess of easily 130 decibels in there. Wow. So these three subs that they were testing were warm. The grills were warm to the touch from the air that was passing through the, mm. um, the, the sub grill. And then as you got closer in, it's like the, your article of clothing, whatever you were wearing, started moving. So everything that they were telling you about just punishing, 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 um, testing and, and rigorous testing, they do try to break the product. We, we got a real great chance to see it. Um, so it was a lot of fun. And uh, I really, that was one of my favorite parts of the day. 
And then we went to immersive audio. So this is not necessarily something that I was expecting to see. And I'm not quite sure what to make of it. And that it's not a negative. But what we got to see is this room. And um, we weren't allowed to take photos. So the photos that you're seeing are, for the most part, courtesy of the professional photographer. Because um, we were there in, in the actual production area where things are happening. So I pulled these from Sean Olive's uh, Twitter feed. So I hope I give credit to Sean and I appreciate this because this wasn't part of our photo stack. But we were put in this room where we got a chance to sit down in where they're testing immersive audio. And I found it fascinating. You and I talked about this after I came back from the trip in California. And you'll notice that they actually have speakers below at floor level, <laughs> right? Yeah. And what I didn't understand, and I'm not sure what it was, is whether or not these are front wides or if these are actually left, right, and then we have sort of a center right, center left. Uh, what I see in those big speakers on the stands is I see LCRs up front and wides and then side channels. I'm not sure that the room was configured exactly. This is Sean's photo. Right. Or unless he did 360 all around him. I mean, we're not seeing the whole view of the room. So right? I have another shot. So the room is, um, the room, they reconfigure it. So you see they have the ability to move speakers along the top in different mm -hmm. positions. And the um, the floor standing um, changed depending on who's doing whatever research that's in there. But it was it was fascinating. So this is obviously the dummy they were doing headphone i think uh, simulation and, and research mm -hmm. um the point is it was really cool to see what they're doing to sort of simulate and identify the psychoacoustic impact of speakers um to sort of give you that immersive audio and, and spherical experience so this is a picture of the room um from the back um so they also have a you know that that sixth speaker what used to be like the 6.1 so yeah. right directly behind. So that's part of the configuration and the setup as well. So you can you can custom. Yeah, uh, the Trinov allows you to actually add that channel. So that's yes. probably what they're using in there. Uh, yeah, I don't remember what the processor was. Um, if it was the, it must have been the Trinov with the ability to do the customization. But I I don't recall. Hmm. I don't know that we we had access to that. And then this was a little treat. The hallway that connects that room to where we were was an unexpected treat of audio history. So lining the hallway, JBL, Harmon, they have start, they literally have an archive of some of the classic products that are seminal to audio history. So wow. look at this, right? JB Lansing one of the original speakers they have drivers wow, that have been cool. carved out i mean this was really great i'm talking this is just all along the highway the hallway and as we're walking down we're going oh my god that's so cool i hadn't seen that before or this and that so gene i don't know if you will recognize this or if anybody recognizes this because this is a great piece of audio history I know it's, I know they made like a console stereo system, but it was a different one. It's like, a, I've seen it before on eBay with their selling for like $50,000. I don't Maybe. expect you to know this. This is the first studio monitor. Oh my God. Now, 1938. The whole, I mean, look at that thing, right? Damn. So it, this was really great. Uh, we really took a moment to, to soak in what is really over at this point, like a century of folks really trying to recreate the audio experience and to see the passion, the love, the drive and the expression of that over time. It was it was just really, really great. So I appreciated um, this component. It wasn't something that was at, that was on our agenda, but it just sort of was was there along the way as we were passing from one venue to another. So it was really great to be able to do that. So I wanted to share that uh, with everybody. It was, it was really cool. And then we started to get into some applications. So I, I'm 
with all the products we saw, I I chose a specific flair and flavor of certain things that we were exposed to for different use cases. Um, the first is JBL's Conceal series of speakers. So remember what we said earlier is we don't want to see the audio. We just want it to be out of the way. And wouldn't it be great if we had completely invisible speakers? And that's exactly what JBL's Conceal series does is this is a um, it's an in-wall speaker, but what you do is you stick it in the sheetrock, you spackle around that little beveled edge, and then you paint over it. And guess what? You have a completely invisible speaker that you can't tell the difference between the regular sheetrock. So they had just done an installation. So that area where we were um, in, in the Harmon facility, they were building out some new listening rooms. And in particular, what they did here is they were building out a new video conference room. And um, so they had a large television in there, a large display, conference table. And then they had the conceal speakers in the walls on either side of the television and in ceiling. And literally, you couldn't tell where those speakers were. Um, how was the audio quality? It was really good. It was for something that's completely invisible. The audio was intelligible. It was musical, it was engaging. So for um, architectural applications, again, if you're, hey, I, I want my significant other to allow me to have uh, surround sound or I want whole home music, I don't wanna limit myself to something that's junky, this is really an incredible solution. Um, yeah, I mean, there's an advantage to this over, if someone can't put speakers on the wall um, in their theater, in their family room, they tend to put the front three LCRs in the ceiling, which is the worst position, right? right. This is a huge advantage because now you still have line of sight and you have invisible speakers. And I've heard this technology has really matured over the last five or six years. I, I went to Sonance and did the demo of this type of speaker, their invisible speaker versus their traditional in-wall. And they almost sounded very close, like yeah. 85, 90% as good. Maybe they didn't play quite as loud. They're a little less sensitive, but it's come a long way for sure. And here's the kicker, as somebody just put in the chat, they're nail proof. So nobody can hang a wall, a hang a punch a nail to hang a picture through them. Oh, I didn't even think of that. Yes. I mean, that was <laughs> the first thing. It's like, well, if you can't see the speaker, so yeah. yeah, that front casing will prevent you from putting a nail through. And again, you're going to say, okay, well, what if I do this? What if I do that? Really, Jim Garrett here, uh, you know, who's in charge of the, the luxury audio group, he really made it a point to emphasize is that all the protection cir circuitry is there. These things really are uh, bulletproof. And they showed us what the Conceal series looks like. Uh, let's say, go here. Um, so you can get an idea of how the wow. panel is and then how it is. I mean, these things are, are really encased and sealed in it's like Fort so, Knox. Yeah. Uh, this was a demo case that they had for dealers. So that's why it has the, the handle on top, but this is exactly what it looks like installed. So it's, it's, I was really impressed with this product. It's a great solution. It's something that probably isn't on most folks radar, but I think it has so much practical application. That's probably something we want to make it a point to showcase because it might be that differentiator for somebody to get the better audio quality that they're striving for. So they don't have to settle for some, you know, little rinky dink plug in speaker and, mm -hmm. and really up their game. So that was, that was cool. Um, the stage series speakers, I was not, I, I was really impressed with these. I tell you for a couple of hundred bucks, these things are unbelievable. Oh, they have a real wave guide on. I oh yeah. I <laughs> I, I, I would, okay, so this is one of the, the domestic rooms that we were in. So they brought us in, and, and yes, they've got some nice treatment on them. And, yeah, okay, they, they had an Atmos set up, and when they turned the sound on, this was freaking fantastic. These things are a couple of hundred bucks. So if you're looking for something that's architectural, high performance, I again, I was... Wow. I, that's all I got to tell you. Do they have uh, in in wall subwoofers to go with it, or would you have to get a different line to do that? Oh, that's a good question. 
I don't know. We have to look at the guide. I don't think in this, I don't think in this specific line, there's an in-wall sub that's complimentary for it. Okay. I'm sure when you did the demo, they had subwoofers playing with them, right? Uh, in the corners, if you look at the photo, they had subs. Yeah. So, and uh, I don't remember for this demo, my impression is for the uh, in-walls. They Actually, have that sub could be for those other speakers that are those monitors that are there. Oh, I'll get to the monitors in a second because yeah. those are among my favorite. The um, one of the questions is: I believe that they do have a subwoofer for the Conceal series, if I'm not mistaken. So if you Google JBL Conceal, you'll get mm -hmm. the whole product line, and I'm pretty sure there's there's a complimentary subwoofer that goes along. Okay. So that was uh, something. So the point here that they were trying to make is if you want a home theater experience, you want a genuine Atmos experience, and you don't have a lot of money to spend, and again, this might be um, it's a starter system, or I want something that's higher performance, or this is something that I, I just need the aesthetics. This was really a, a great eye-opening solution. So this is the price point that we're talking about, $150, yeah, $225 really. per speaker. So very, very impressive with, with what that is. And then I want to get into the... Um, the do they have a box equivalent for this or no? They do. All right. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, there is a, um, a, a freestanding uh, mm -hmm. speaker equivalent of the JBL stage. So if you look at the Stage XD, which I'll get to, I think, in the next slide. There we go. These are their outdoor speakers. So what they did for us here is they put it into the large room that we were in where they do a lot of the acoustic design and modeling. Then they have the outdoor speaker set up. So these are the uh, XD6s specifically. Once again, the advantage of a compression driver and a properly designed waveguide. I mean, we're, we're what? We're in this 1,000 square foot area mm -hmm. and incredible off access performance, great base response, all weather enclosure and user serviceable. And not that expensive so yeah. that was a real eye-opener for me um so my point is hey we have jbl's got the conceal series that's really for something that's going to be architectural you want invisible you want something that's more entry level for home theater and immersion uh you have the stage series now if you want something outdoor you have the stage xd uh, series as well so again up north where we are us uh, new englanders are bostonians uh we're not necessarily outdoors all the time, but for somebody like you, Gene, out there in Florida. It's too freaking hot to be outdoors all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Once you're under a covered lanai by a pool. <laughs> it's great. It's great. But yeah, this this is a great experience. And again, it was where the rubber hits the road with, with the engineering and, and the design. Uh, this was one of my favorites right here. The, the 4, uh, 4305 powered monitor. So I'm a tech geek, so I'm mm -hmm. not shy about it. You know that everything that I do with the products, I always like getting under the hood. And this is a completely self-powered monitor that requires nothing but the speaker. So this has built-in ethernet, a built-in DAC, Chromecast, AirPlay. It has uh, Bluetooth built in. You literally have to take the speaker, plug it in, both speakers are wireless. They self-pair to each other. You plop them on a desk and you're done. They sounded freaking fantastic. What really impressed me too was the bass response. We were sitting in the room and they were playing these. And, and again, look at, again, it's Harman. They, they know where the placement is. They're slightly out in the room. They're getting some nice room gain. But we initially thought the subs were engaged and the subs weren't engaged and you were really getting some solid bass performance out of this. And that's one of the things that they were really proud about in the design is how they've really tuned these speakers uh, to do that. So again, a little bit higher on the price point, but if you think about it, $2,200, no integrated amp needed, you need no electronics, everything is built in. And yeah, you basically you just use your phone, you use your phone and you stream right to it, right? Yeah. Phone, yeah. computer, 
you name it. So it's really designed as an all one, all in one um, solution. So I, I really, really like these monitors. They, um, they really made an impression on me. Is that a six inch or an eight inch driver? Probably six, maybe. I have to look at the spec. I don't have yeah. it in front. I know of I heard these at the Audio Advice live show um, last year. So they, I think they were debuting them there or whatever. But I, I remember them doing a demo. They were pretty great. Yeah, it is. So here's a view from the back. And you can see this is really made for prosumer, for someone who's doing mixing. You've got yeah. every connection. Oh, and the really cool thing is if you plug a sub in, it auto engages a crossover automatically. Yeah. The base manages itself, basically. Yeah, it's great. Just really smart design. Really, really smart design. Um, this was my second favorite. This product totally blew me away. It is the L75 MS Music System. This is an all-in-one speaker. So when we walked into the room, I think we all thought it was the center channel. Yeah, it looks like that. Our speakers, but it's not. Check this out. This thing is a full uh, virtual surround sound solution. So they sat us down. I was in the back of the room. So I was, I was not seated. I was standing in the back. They turned this thing on and all of us are looking around the room. It is probably the most realistic virtual surround sound I have ever experienced, ever. Wow. I was totally blown away. We're going to have to get you one for review. Well, I've, I did. I emailed Harmon. This is the one that I actually want to get in the house and I want to start testing. So if I want to see if it's, you know, you're in a controlled room where, where they are. So you, you've got some nice um, rectangular dimensions to the room. So you're getting all the right wall bounce. I, I want to get this into a domestic space to see it. But I was so impressed with the virtual performance, the imaging, in the sound so um uh gene birds and rise you like birds i like rise right mm -hmm. they played rise on this thing i love rise was fantastic yeah fantastic and we were all just looking at each other in the room and going the performance of this all-in-one thing is really fantastic How much so, did, did they say what the price is on it the price I've got somewhere, I, I'll have to look it up for you. It, it's not cheap, but for what it delivers, it's it's impressive. It has an HDMI eARC as well on the back. So you can use this in lieu of, let's say, uh, a poor performing soundbar, and you'll really get some, um, some good performance on this. So I don't know if somebody wants to just Google it quickly to see what the, the MSRP is on this guy. Um, I don't have it readily available on my notes. Okay. Um, and then the black edition. So I'm a huge fan of the classic series. I had the opportunity to, um, to review the L82s and I fell in love with these. What I really liked about this series is the dynamics is so addictive of, of this line. And what they've done is let's go back now to the beginning of the talk when we said, hey, what Zoomers are looking for is they're looking for think products that have meaning, things that are created by them. They're looking for limited or special edition things was one of the things that we talked about. Well, this is a direct outgrowth of that research. So what JBL has done is they've taken the classic line, which has now been out for a couple of years, and now they've done a limited run of what they're calling the Black Edition. So it has the L100, the L82, the L52, and the L52 music system that we just talked about. And what they've done is they have put a finish on this that is among the best gloss finishes I've seen. It's equivalent to what you get in, you know, five, $10,000 plus speaker systems. Um, this is a multi-step process, labor intensive. The mirror finish is gorgeous. And then all of the labeling is now custom done in special gold. And the black uh, Quadrex uh, foam grills are now accented with uh, JBL gold badges. So you can see how that looks here. It, it's just really slick look. It's taken the product to another level. 
Now, the two of the speakers, the L100 and the L82, have additional advancements that are just, they're not just cosmetic. So they've upgraded the woofer design for better linearity and reduced distortion. They've upgraded the crossovers. They've added additional inputs for bi-wiring and they've, they've upgraded the binding post. So in those two models, you're getting some technical advantages over and above just the, the cool cosmetics uh, that have happened. So the JBL folks expect this line to uh, run out relatively soon uh, in the new year. So if this is something that you've been looking at or, hey, I've been looking at the classics and I'm really like what i'm hearing about the black edition uh, they're just great they're really cool so uh i i suggest you check it out and then we got a chance to do some home theater listening where really a lot of the products um you know hit the road so we got a chance to uh, audition the studio six the the jbl synthesis and the day ended in in two theater rooms um so this was the the first room so this is one of their smaller theater areas. And again, it was to impress upon us that, hey, the advantages of compression design, uh, compression driver design, the dynamics that are afforded to it, the imaging, and just that theater experience um, that you get. So I was, I think, front center um, with this one, and they played uh, Sting live at the Olympia in Paris. So it was really a fantastic demo. It was a lot of fun, and to hear that in an immersive environment. And this was a more intimate space. So again, you don't have to spend a lot of money to get really exceptional performance as far as this goes. But the the real treat was the John uh, Ergel Theater at the end of the day. So there's, um, if you don't know who John Ergel is, um, research it out. I mean, we're talking about really the pioneer. The, the individual who was like the pioneer for cinema sound. So anything after 1980. And um, he served uh, at Harmon as VP for, I think it was 31 years, if I'm not mistaken. And mm -hmm. somebody can check me on that. And then what they did is they dedicated this theater uh, in honor of John. So it was, it was really a treat to be there. So as we went to uh, the outside of the theater, we saw this. We saw the 80 pound driver sitting in a glass case of the JBL synthesis. So there are two of these that are part of the SSW1 passive subwoofer, which is a dual 15 inch design. And Gene, <laughs> look at the measurements of this thing. 125 dB output, flat out to 20 hertz. I think that wow. thing is huge. Have you seen it? You saw it in person then, right? Oh, we felt it in person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't just see it in person. We got we got the we got the actual demo in the theater. So this thing was intense. It they recommend five thousand watts of amplification. So you're basically taking a, a two point five um, twenty five hundred watt uh, amplifier for each woofer dedicated. And that's the output. So look at the measurements that they have. So unplug your Tesla charging port and use it for the subwoofer. <laughs> exactly. And what's great is this is this is actually the card. This is I took a photo of the card that was on top of the woofer. And look at what they put at the bottom. Oh, yes, we did. <laughs> <laughs> so it was really great. It was really great to see that. So then when we went into the theater, so this is a JBL synthesis um, elite certified theater. So let me just give you an idea. All of the amplification is located in the rack outside the theater. I don't have a, a photo of that, unfortunately. It was really great. It was behind a door. Um, but really, just stack top to bottom were, were all the amplifiers driving um, the speakers. And then they had the uh, JBL uh, synthesis, the, uh, the, the 75 uh, processor. Um, that has Trinoff running it. So they still had the the OPPO 205s, I think, which was great. Um, and as you see, it's a certified elite system. And just a, a quick uh, parentheses is what's neat is if you do a JBL system, JBL will actually certify your system. So a JBL dealers can do this for consumers, somebody who either wants the prestige and, and has a performance 
um, minimum that they, they want to achieve. So the first level is to get synthesis certification for systems up to 16 channels. And then the second level, which is what the, the theater that we were in, is for systems over 16 channels. So this was with the SDP 75. You can have up to 32 channels um, and get JBL synthesis elite status. And then you get that special uh, rack and plate that a dealer will be able to install once, once that's happened. Um, so the room that we were in, I think, is a, it's a 13 point four point twelve if I'm not mistaken that was the configuration of, of the theater so there's the elite system there's a close-up of the uh, SDP 75 processor so it does Atmos it does Oro 3d it does DTSX etc it does everything um, it's an intimate theater it's about two hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of the electronics and, and speaker systems and uh, it has the Everest in the front, which is their top of the line. Um, I think it's the DD66000, uh, if I'm not mistaken, is the product number. Somebody can correct me on that because it's, it's escaping my memory. Um, so we had a chance to sit here. And then Jim Garrett gave us a little bit of explanation about the theater, the design. And then we ramped up with uh, Top Gun Maverick. So it, we had a great demo of that scene where they're all sitting in the class um they've kicked uh maverick out and then he goes into the plane he does it in a minute and a half versus what he had told everybody else and shows that it can be done so the immersion was great the subwoofer response in that room i will never forget <laughs> ever. ever uh it has those subs in it and the theme of the day was the movement of clothing literally my pant legs in the front row were moving from the air that was uh, coming out of the subs with this scene. Uh, it was really intense. So fantastic tribute, uh, just a great showcase of all things JBL and the pinnacle expression of JBL technology. So it was really well worth it. Really, really well worth That's it. That's great. Yeah. So that was us at, at the end of the day. Um, it's probably those of us that, you know, in the audio industry. So if you look close, you'll probably see all your, your faves over there. But, um, yeah, it was great camaraderie, great opportunity just to talk tech. Uh, I really appreciated meeting Mark Glazier. So, you know, the designer who made my salon twos and I felt like, yeah, which one is he in the photo? Cause he, I talked to him regularly, but I never seen him. Oh, I didn't include his photo. <laughs> oh, okay. I was going to say it didn't look like I know I kind of vaguely saw a picture online, but I didn't see him in this photo. So I've got the Mark Glazier and I'm sitting there. I, I'm right here and I'm going, he's like, he's like the famous guy that you're, you're yeah. shy to talk to. So yeah, I did want to do that. So I'm like there and I'm like, Mark, thanks. I really, I enjoy your design every day. That's awesome. So there you go. It was all uh, right. Well, we got great, through great that program. slide presentation. Hey? And we did it in <laughs> an hour. About an hour. Uh, yeah. So it was good. It was uh, really good. Um, I, I'll say something else that is a little bit off the cuff. And I, I, I made this observation towards the end of the day, and, and we were all talking about this a, as a group. What they didn't say at Harmon that came through to me and everybody else was the genuine camaraderie that we felt among the staff and the engineers. And you know, it's like, okay, so-and-so has been here for 10 years. You know, so-and-so has been here for 18 years. So-and-so has been here for, you know, X number of years. So you're really seeing uh, folks who have a tremendous passion for uh, the product, for the design, for, for sound, and, and being able to convey that. So it's, it's, it was a great opportunity, something on my bucket list. And uh, I was kind of there both as a fan and as an, an audioholic reporter uh, all awesome. at the same time. Well, you did a great job, Taylor. I appreciate you going through basically the whole experience. You mean you really did a good job captivating it with the photos and the explanations. And uh, yeah, that's awesome, man. I would like to do something like that one day. I want to definitely go out and visit their, um, you know, their area where they do the speaker testing and the speaker shuffling. I would like to see that in person. So we did not get a chance to do that the facility was under renovation. So we, mm. that was the one thing that of everything we didn't get a chance to do, unfortunately, but it was great regardless. Awesome. Well, appreciate it again, Teo. Guys, if you liked this video, please thumb it up. Please hit that like button. 
Don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audioholics. We appreciate your support. You get direct access to me if you want to suggest video topics or or tell me where you want to send Teo next. Maybe we'll send him out of the maybe we'll send him out of the country. There you go. Why don't we we'll we'll talk about that one? We'll we'll do where's Teo in the audio world, and that'll become our our thing, just like uh Jimmy Kimmel, right? Has yeah, exactly. So all right, I'll, I'll be that for you. All right. Well, again, thanks, Teo. And guys, until next time, my friends, keep listening.